Shalom and welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to Treasures of the Torah. I'm Moray Matan, Pastor Matt McEwen. It's my joy to be with you once again as we look into this week, Parashat Kitisa. This begins in the 30th chapter of Exodus in the 11th verse. And once again, we're in the commentary series or collection known as Wellspring of Torah. And this week, this comment comes from the al Sheikh HaKadosh. Here's what it says in chapter 30, verses 11 and 12. Hashem spoke to Moshe, saying, When you take a census of the children of Israel according to their numbers, then they shall give every man a ransom for his soul. What does this mean? This can sound confusing to us if we don't understand the background. So let's read what this says in this commentary. An alternate rendering of this passage is, And Hashem spoke to Moshe, saying, When you appoint the head of the children of Israel. God says to Moshe, when you appoint a leader and head of the Jews, choose only someone willing to sacrifice himself as a ransom for his people, if need be. This is such a wonderful passage, and I don't even need to give you the punchline. If you're a believer in Messiah Yeshua, then you already see the parallel here. Appoint someone to be the head of the Jews only if they're willing to sacrifice themselves for the Jewish people. That's exactly what Yeshua did. But if we look back even further, it's what Moses was willing to do himself. Moshe said, Lord, cut me off and allow your people to be saved. Rav Shaul in the Brit Hadashah says exactly the same thing. I would be willing to be cut off for my people if all of the Jewish people would be able to come to the knowledge of the Messiah. It sounds like such an awful thing to suggest, but as Yeshua has taught us, the greatest type of love that you can show is to be willing to lay down your life for a friend. Now, this idea of giving up your life this is the truest definition of Ahavat Yisrael, of loving the fellow person in the house of Israel. This idea of messy root nefesh, of laying down one's life for someone else. It's huge. And it's something that is very honorable to lay down one's life in Judaism for someone else. You know, there is a story that comes from us, from the Jewish tradition, about Abraham and Isaac. Now, Isaac, contrary to what you may have learned in Sunday school, Isaac was 37 years old when he was willing to be sacrificed on an altar to Hashem. As Abraham and Isaac are walking, it says in the Midrash that Isaac carried the wood on his back as one carries his own cross. What an amazing statement. What a picture that is. It says there in that passage that the two of them walked on together. They walked together on this mission. And when Isaac asked his father Abraham, we have the fire, we have the knife, we have the wood for the fire, but where is the lamb? And Abraham says to his son, the Lord will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice, my son. The Lord will provide, which is why this place then, of course, is named Adonai Yireh, the Lord will see to it. The Lord will provide. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided, it is said. When it says after Abraham gives his answer that the two of them walked along together, it, it repeats that phrase. The Torah, as we have learned many times, never wastes words. There is an economy of words in the Torah that is unparalleled. And when something is repeated, it means that it's repeated for a specific purpose. It's repeated intentionally. And this statement that the two of them walked on together is said twice because first, it is before Isaac realizes what is going on and they're in agreement, they're walking together. But after he realizes exactly what's going on, that he is going to be the sacrifice on the altar, he is going to be the quote unquote lamb. Well then, when it says the two of them walked on together, it means that Isaac did so because he agreed to it. 
There's even uh, another Jewish tradition that says that Satan appeared to Isaac and tried to talk him out of this, tried to say that your dad has gone insane, he's crazy, he's going to try to murder you. And what Isaac said to Satan is, may I be a ransom, may I be an atonement for the Jewish people. And of course we understand from that story that according to tradition, God took Isaac's soul from him before he could see his father raise the knife to his son. And then after the angel called out and said that there was a ram that would be substituted for Isaac, caught by its horns in the thicket, it says in the tradition that that's when God put Isaac's soul back into his body. And in doing that, and him removing Isaac's soul so he wouldn't see his father raising a knife to him, what that means is he died. If God took his soul, it means he died. And then if God put his soul back, well, it means that he rose again, that he resurrected. Remember what Abraham said in faith, the boy and I will go and worship, and then we will return to you. Now, why do I bring this up? Because Isaac is such a wonderful example for us of being willing to sacrifice himself for others. I'll quickly remind you that in the story of Joseph, we see that Judah does the exact same thing. We've mentioned this before in those previous Torah portions about Judah being willing to substitute himself for Benjamin. And we believe, according to tradition, that this is why the Messiah comes from the line of Judah, because of this act of kindness this act of self-sacrifice, this act of messy root nefesh that Judah performed. It is just like Isaac. It is just like Moses. It is just like Yeshua. It is just like Paul. May we have the kind of love for one another that we're willing to lay down our lives for our friends, for our loved ones, for our disciples, for our teachers. I pray that we would even have such baseless love in our lives that we'd be willing to lay our lives down for a complete stranger. You know, I was listening to uh, a speaker one time years ago that said, he said to the people in the room that he was speaking to, I fully believe that even if I don't know you, if this building caught on fire, that I would try to come in and save you. I fully believe that. Even if I don't know you, I'd put my life at risk to save you. I would never send my child in to save you. Although I'm willing to risk my life to save you from this burning building. I am not willing to sacrifice my son for you. And that is how we know how big the love of God is. Because he was not only willing to sacrifice his son, he was not only the son, just as the son Isaac was not only willing to be sacrificed, but Yeshua really did lay down his life in this act of self-sacrifice, of nullification, of messy root nefesh, of laying down his life for us. We must not take that for granted and we must not treat it disrespectfully. This is what he has done for us and we need to follow after him just out of sheer gratitude for, for what he was willing to do for you and for me. I pray that this teaching today has been a blessing to you. If you'd like to join us in the largest online Messianic Jewish, Jewish yeshiva in the world, you can go to shuvu.tv where you can study Messianic Judaism led by Jews and some classes taught by Gentiles like me who have come close to Israel and taken upon themselves a Jewish identity even though we are not Jewish. We love you and support you. We are praying for you. Thank you for all of your prayers and for your financial support. God's richest blessings be upon you. Shabbat Shalom and all the best to you and your family.